Hey, good afternoon. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. I'm conducting a pre-purchase inspection today. Website autoappraise.com, A-U-T-O-A-P-P-R-A-I-S-E.com, 800-301-3886. If you need inspection service like this anywhere across the country, currently today in Michigan, doing a Type 2 VW bus, 1971. It's a cool looking rig. They uh, started the Type 2 production in 1967, ended up in 1979. Also referred to as the Combi or the uh, VW Transporter. Earlier versions of the uh, Type 1 Microbus came in different window selection sizes. Started production, I think, around 1950, and Type 1s ran until about. Uh, the uh, beginning of the Type 2 era, which I guess is pretty obvious based on the name, Type 1, Type 2. Went through and did a, a visual inspection on the vehicle already, magnet test, crawled underneath the underbody and took, we shot over 250 photos, maybe up to 300 today, inside, outside, and under it. Going to try to give a definition of this vehicle to the purchaser who was long distance and trying to figure out what it is that's the type of service. If you're watching this video right now, it's not going to be a public video until the buyer decides yay or nay. If they decide nay, then I'll, uh, I'll put the vehicle back up on the web and it can be viewed by any and all of you. So if you're uh, watching this video right now, somebody might have already bought this bus. So bottom line, I don't give out uh, buyer information until they make a decision. Here's my exploded view, which kind of uh, uh, outlines. They can freeze frame on this, slash you can freeze frame on this, and then kind of see what I have seen. Amazing how that bus looks like a car in the exploded view, eh? So some general chips, nicks, and scratches. Um, this side of the van probably includes the uh, worst cosmetic uh, features. There's a little bit of a wrinkle in this panel that wasn't worked out. A little bit of physical damage. Uh, maybe three hours slash five hours if we're talking about bump time to get this kind of straightened out and probably make that door align just a bit better. These doors are some kind of a two-handed effort often to get them open and closed. Uh, the tires are relatively new on the unit. The wheels have been painted. The bumpers have been painted. Um, <clears throat> hand painted up front. Got a scratch, a little tiny ding. Uh, a couple little scratches. A little chip touched up. So down this side, we've got good uh, digital paint meter adhesion. Let me pop that out real quick. So readings were anywhere from 3 to 10. Uh, down here we have a little bit of uh, filler in this repair, 15, uh, 25. Uh, back here we won't get 12. Uh, right in this area right here, I didn't get a reading or magnetic adhesion right in this little corner here. So not, uh, not too much real filler issues to deal with. All the glass is in nice shape. The window doesn't roll up and down. The regulator is spinning on the driver's side. That's going to need to be serviced. A parking light uh, frame is kind of deteriorated. This needs to be replaced. There's some age cracks in the front lenses in both of them. And just a little bit of uh, panel wobble down both sides. You can kind of see that in the center of those doors. Not really uncommon. Somebody didn't spend a lot of time blocking it out. Uh, took some digital photographs up here. There's been a little bit of repair uh, right in this area. Um, magnetic adhesion is weaker with the business card magnet and stronger with like a flashlight style magnet. I've got photos of that to show the onlooker. Peering down the driver's side, I left the magnets up just to kind of show the lower adhesion. Just a little bit of uh, wobble nothing too abnormal wheel splashes are in nice shape and uh, we've got a, a chip here a chip there door corners have a good adhesion rockers have good adhesion 7.5 6.5 3.5 
1.5. Uh, these refrigerator business card style magnets, they stick to everything from about 18 or 20 mils of thickness of paint on down. And you can see the adhesion's good. Similar on the other side, I just ran out of magnets. This little area right here, let me see if I'm capturing it actually. Uh, I wasn't getting good magnetic adhesion there, but I am getting it with my my heavier magnet right in that area. So, so there we go. There's a little crease right here. Whoop, see it? I would say that that would be written for about a three or four hour ding slash dent if it was going to be repaired. It's nothing too horrible and as you back up, it's not uh, too consuming, if you know what I mean. Roof paint appears to be in nice shape. Luggage rack is in nice shape. Let's go through the inside and then we'll get underneath it. It's had an exterior repaint. Uh, the interior paint surfaces look to be uh, original OEM. A little bit of oxidation, but the door corners themselves are in nice shape. No real uh, bubbling or uh, heavy corrosion or anything like that. Just a little bit of uh, just a little bit of surface rust from lack of paint coverage. That could clean up pretty easily. Nothing too disconcerting there. Deck stays up like it should. Rear compartment's been recarpeted and some uh, custom trim work has been done. Seat covers. A little bit different style of uh, color, but it ties together pretty nicely. Headliner was all redone. Side panels all redone and rewrapped. Somebody added a wood floor. So it uh, has a nice appearance. Uh, door panels recovered on both sides. Door corners are in good shape. Uh, glass is all in good shape. There's a little bit of a scratch on this uh, vent window here, but the other windows remained in pretty good shape for OEM. A few little light scratches. No major rock chips. Seats were recovered nicely and don't look like they have much wear on them. Original trim tag in place there. Original VIN on dash and uh, in the door jam on the driver's side. Glove box works. And a uh, custom embroidery there on the wall. Wall panels and seats are in uh, nice shape. Driver's seat, same uh, description. Steering wheels had some uh, touch-up paint work, stock, AM FM radio, cool set of cup holders, rubber mats been changed, and then new, a new trim against the uh, firewall. Um, some wiring has been uh, uh, tidied up and updated. The harness has not been changed. The door is open and closed nice. This uh, slider door takes more of a two-person effort one to push in and one to kind of close and I didn't open it up on the inspection here and during the video because I'm by myself. Little chip there, little nick there, pointed out in the exploded view. And again, tires are in really good shape. Let's, let's uh, get into the engine bay and look underneath it. A windshield's a PGW, PGW replacement unit if I didn't mention it. And I'll finish up by showing the uh, luggage rack and roof paint which all appear to be in uh, pretty good shape. I apologize for the lack of light. I'm using my little uh, LED light, which is a pretty cool, uh, well portable used light. Helps me get some good bright light on the subject and see what you can see. It looks like the carburetor has been uh, gone through. The unit started up and pulled in here real nice. It was sitting outside and uh, they pulled it out for me, but then it started raining here, so pulled it back in and wiped it down. Um, there is some various wiring repairs that have been made, and some of them could stand to be uh, loved a little bit and dressed up. Just some stuff that could be cleaned up, soldered, taped a little better over here. Um, over here we have a few various wires that could be cleaned up in the taped up part of the original harness. 
uh, that aluminum foil cover that was made for uh, the drop on the heat exchanger that could be cleaned up and uh, I think I would glue a Smucker's jelly lid to that if we're not going to use it. The heating um, source has kind of been deleted, eliminated from this. So if you were going to want heat from it, you might have to do a little uh, reconstructive um, components, um, add some stuff to it. So again, a few taped up wires up top, and it just could be cleaned up a bit. Engine oil is in pretty clean shape, looks like it was changed not too long ago. Uh, engine block unit number is uh, E960190. It is a later motor than the motor that actually came in this vehicle. Back side of the lid, on this little air-cooled four-cylinder is in good shape. Uh, no heavy rod or scale or decay on the lips, looking nice. Uh, back here on the rear trim, uh, lights are in pretty good shape, a little patina on the bezels. And a crack through that one on the uh, lower light. A little bit of uh, patina on the door handles, but nothing horrific. Looks like they were pulled off before the unit was repainted. Looks like it was repainted in a single stage orange, very similar to its original uh, color combination. A uh, little bit of light orange peel and some minor general contamination, but nothing um, nothing horrific. It's a good looking driver from uh, 7 to 10 feet and could stand a few little more spots just touched up on it. All right, let's climb under. Uh, one more note, uh, the bumpers, the gap is a little bit wide here and then it tightens up on the body here and then becomes wide again. The bumpers back just a little bit in the center and, and back on this side. It's nothing too obvious. Let's see if we get down look at those brackets and see maybe if that could be adjusted out. That's the hand painted unit I was talking about earlier. So structure wise, uh, the front end as we comb along from left to right, uh, this lower uh, inner reinforcement panel, those all appear to be factory spot welds along there. Factory pinch weld uh, shaped nicely. A little bit of caulk touch up on that corner. Um, that rail looks nice and straight. No evidence of compression or any repairs, no tears in that uh, die hole, and uh, no crinkles that I can see. Coming back, we have the same condition here and here. So if this thing was bumped in the front, it was that. It was bumped. It wasn't lambasted. Otherwise, the structure would have caved in. It would look uglier. I had one of these buses a while back that needed some restoration work, and mine was hit in the front, and it didn't look like this. So, uh, inner structure is all real solid. Some surface rust and whatnot, but uh, pretty good. There's a little bit of rust ahead of the... This is on the floor in the wheel wells ahead of the front tire. And there's a spot there, somebody put some tin in, they pop riveted it from uh, the inside. And uh, just did kind of a cosmetic, would you say, repair that keeps the splash in the water from coming out. And we got the same condition over here. Uh, those holes, to give you a reference size, there's my thumb. So uh, they're not very big. They could be sealed up and tightened up, maybe a little bit more. And uh, They've probably been that way for 20 years. Uh, moving back, the suspension, uh, nothing looks freshly rebuilt uh, or replaced. Well greased. Brake booster appears to be in pretty decent shape. Cosmetic aging present. Really no new rubber seals or anything down here. The wheel tubs themselves all look really good. Uh, just that one spot there I was referring to. And some corrosion and paint peel type of stuff. So uh, heading rearward here, there's a good look at the structure and the pan.
again cosmetic surface rust but uh, the rails are very uh, stout no evidence of heavy corrosion there in the rails or anything like that the uh, ball joint boots are aged upper and lower both sides those are probably going to need some attention I would say pretty soon all right driver's side here we go uh, the pan is in nice uh, solid shape rails again in good good shape there's surface rust here up in this area but nothing uh, my makeshift hammer will punch through they can certainly stand a coat of POR 15 inner rocker structure looks really nice and uh, the pinch welds all look really solid and stable there's nothing nothing uh, corrosive or horrible to report there rails in good shape some uh, grease build up on the transaxle and uh, nothing actively pouring out of the motor I fired it up to pull it up on the ramps uh, rear suspension Nothing really terribly new back there. Shocks look older. Torsion bar uh, setup just looks uh, relatively aged to the age of the unit. And again, the heat exchangers are probably going to need some work along with the other heating components if someone's going to make this rig run down the road with heat. Over here on the passenger side, uh, there's some uh, peeling of some original style undercoat or spray that's there. And again, pinch welds are real solid. We get back into this portion of the pan and we do have some uh, deterioration through the pan. Inner rocker structure looks really good, but there's a section here and a section here. It's still pretty stout. Some repairs could be uh, made without too much heavy surgery. You see the pinch weld and the flange is all still really good all along here. So a little bit of this could be uh, trimmed out and or just uh, cosmetically covered up because uh, structure-wise it seems not really have an issue but that being said it's there and then rear splashes are both in good shape I don't know if I showed you a good shot of the other side but it's it's in nice shape under the back end of the vehicle the exhaust system appears to be in pretty good shape a few chips down low on the bumper here and up on the corner there's some deterioration through this inner pan up here and uh, no doubt that was caused by the battery so they sell a replacement piece I know I got one for mine this section can be uh, put in without too much trouble you'll see the uh, pipes for the heat exchanger there are eliminated heading forward so there's some components again that are missing that would need to be added to this rig. Some uh, steam cleaning and degreasing is in order just to kind of see things a little better but I don't see any obvious active oil coming out of the unit. There's a drip right there. I think that belongs to us. Uh, but nothing too much. I'm going to get the thing back out, run it for a while, and we'll get it uh, get this little air cooled motor uh, air cooled motor heated up. Engine's pretty cold right now. Floor temperature is 56. Engine temperature is 64. Yeah. So showing 50,408 miles.
see if I can find neutral. I guess that wasn't it. A few hairline cracks in the steering wheel. I may or may not have pointed out earlier. The, uh, the dash itself, the gauges look pretty original. The lighting's not terrific in here. Uh, somebody had drilled out the rivets that hold it in the jam here, and those need to be uh, refastened, re-secured on both sides. Steering column mounts here uh, for a support bracket, and, uh, and that moves a little bit. And I suppose that probably could be tightened up. ahead and uh, get it outside so we don't kill ourselves in here. No unusual smoke coming from it that I can see. Engine sounds pretty good. It's a little bit wet outside. I'm going to go ahead and let it uh, warm up and run for a minute. Uh, the gas gauge does not appear to be working or else I am really, really low. I don't think that's the case. Headlights are coming on. that in a minute. Uh, the window regulator is not operational currently. Passenger is working fine. Still raining out here so we're not going to stay out and play too long. But I'm going to let it run, warm up and run for a little while. Looks like we got a right uh, tail light out. Uh, turn signals in the back are not operating. My guess is that there's going to be a little bit of electrical wiring necessary to be completed to clean this rig up. I would speculate probably between six and eight hours just to be safe. And uh, I think that might remedy um, the headlights, which I think just blew a fuse when I put the other turn signal on. Uh, they're not operating at this moment, so my guess is a little bit of the uh, electrical service is going to be in order. Alright, I'm going to let it run another 10 or 15 minutes, maybe cook it around the parking lot real quick. Alright, we'll take her for a uh, quick little run. Speedometer appears to be operational. 408.2 on the trip or the uh, odometer miles. All right, the brakes seem to apply reasonably well, and this is kind of a I've got a little dead end cul-de-sac. I decided to run it down. They may yell at me for doing this, but. Uh, Taking my chances here, if I can find first gear again. There we go. I think I got it. Oh, well, that's not it. How about that? Time. Yeah, 
uh, definitely more helpful when I start out in first gear. not a wet day and uh, I had somebody else holding my camera I think I'd probably be enjoying this a little more Let's see if I got first gear this time there we go job to take my hands off the wheel. It seems to be going pretty straight. Hey, there you have it, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. I'm wrapping up a three-hour inspection on a 1971 Type 2 VW bus. I forgot to take my magnets off, but uh, amazingly, they, they made the journey. It's a good-looking driver quality bus. has a little bit of corrosion slash rust in the pan as you saw in the video has a little bit of cosmetic physical damage um, you know for a for a driver it would be uh, useful if somebody really wanted to get after it they might do a little bump work on that uh, box side or that quarter to get that uh, door aligning nicer and uh, knock that little ding out right there Engine still seems to be running good. I think it's got some uh, electrical issues that need sorting out. Hazard lights are not uh, operational. And the turn signals killed my headlights. So uh, I think we got a, a fuse gone there. Hard to tell. A little bit of uh, repair work. I think it would make a nice driver. All right, thanks for hanging out. Have a great day.